Hey, Flip Geometry, how are we doing? Last time we talked about how to find a couple of centers of a triangle, and today we're going to look at how to find a couple of other centers of a triangle. So well, let's jump right into it, shall we? Let's get going. We've talked about bisecting angles and uh, segments before. Here we're going to look at a, another application of that and apply it to finding the center of a triangle. A point lies on the bisector of an angle if and only if it is equidistant from its sides. So uh, one way of defining a angle bisector is that it's the set of points that are equidistant from the two sides of the angle. Point P is equidistant from point E and F, and therefore it is part of the set of points bisecting this angle. All of the points along this line are equidistant from the two sides. Okay, That's an important aspect of bisecting that we're going to use to find another way of looking at the center of a triangle. So if we take that idea and we say an angle bisector produces a line, all of the points on which are equal distant from the two sides of the triangle that that line bisects, um, then we're going to say that everything on this line is equidistant from these two lines, and everything on this bisector is equidistant from these two lines, and everything on this bisector is equidistant from these two lines. So if we find where those three points are concurrent or where they intersect, then we will say that at that point, um, that point of the circle is equidistant from all the sides of the triangle. Okay, This um, point will be the center of a circle, and the circle will touch all three sides of the triangle. And so we have, uh, we have found the point of the center of an inscribed circle. The circle is the triangle's inscribed circle and the intersection of the triangle's angle bisectors is called the in-center. The in-center because it is the center of an inscribed circle. Similarly to a circumcenter was the center of a circumscribed circle. Now we have the in-center, the center of an inscribed circle. So to state that succinctly then, the in-center theorem is that a triangle's angle bisectors are concurrent at the in-center, the point that is equidistant from each side of the triangle. And just again, the angle bisectors here are shown, and they are convergent here. And so point I is the same distance from points A, B, and C, which will be the, uh, the shortest you know, way to get to that side. Uh, and so we can call that the in-center because it's the center of an inscribed circle. Let me know if you have any questions of that when we see each other tomorrow. Now we're going to look at the center of an, another way of looking at the center of a triangle. So we have, we have uh, three centers so far. We're going to look at one more. A median of a triangle is a segment that extends from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if I drop a, a line segment that starts at a vertex and hits the opposite side of the triangle in the middle of that side of the triangle, I've drawn a median. Don't get medians and altitudes confused. Altitudes strike the opposite side at a 90 degree angle. Medians strike the, the uh, opposite side of the triangle so that they cut that side of the triangle in half. Uh, sometimes you will see that altitudes are also medians, but that's not normally the case. A intersection of a triangle's median is called the centroid. So let's look at that. Here we have a triangle, and I'm going to draw a line so that I go from the vertex and I cut the opposite side in half. A line here is from the vertex so that I cut the opposite side in half. And the same thing here. If I, I could fold the triangle along all of these lines and have, in, uh, have divided the opposite side in half, right? If I cut the, uh, or if I, if I fold the triangle along all three of these uh, medians, I will find that they are concurrent at a certain point, and that is the centroid. So this is the center of the triangle as defined by its medians, so that the, uh, the medians divide the opposite side in half, and find all three of those, you have found the centroid. Okay, so the centroid theorem, the three medians of a triangle are concurrent at the centroid, which is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the opposite side's midpoint. That's another way of looking at that. So kind of a cool thing. I have a median here. I have a median here and a median here. They all are concurrent at this point. And the ratio of the distance from G to Z is going to be half of G to C. If you take CZ and you find the two-thirds of the way down, that's point G. 
You find AX and you go two thirds the way down it, that's also point G. You find BY and you go two thirds the way down it, you thought that's also point G. So that means that all of the short sides of these will be half of the long sides of these. Kind of a cool ratio that we've discovered, and that's true for every triangle. So just so we've seen that explicitly, once you say that this is divided at the two-thirds point, you've said that the shorter segment is half of the longer segment, right? The centroid divides each median into segments whose lengths are in a two-to-one ratio. Okay, uh, let's move on to an example. So if point G is the centroid, then um, it's going to divide all these things into one to two ratios, right? So if triangle PQR, um, it well, centroid triangle PQR and PD equals 15. So PD is 15, then what's PG? Well, that's going to be two thirds of that, right? So two thirds of 15 is 10. All right. Um, let's find RG. RG here, if GF is 3, then RG is going to be twice that, right? So that's going to be 6. Let's do one more. Let's find EG if GQ is 8. So this is twice this, right? So that means that that's going to be half of 8, which would be 4. This brings us to a nice summary of our centers of triangles that we have found so far. Uh, the in center, the center of the inscribed circle, is going to be equidistant from all sides. The centroid, the uh, center found by all the medians, um, is two-thirds uh, from the vertex to the opposite midpoint on each, on each median. The circumcenter is going to be found by using the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle and is the center of a circle that will circumscribe the triangle. So that, re remember, a circumscribed circle touches all the vertexes. Okay, And then an orthocenter is found by all of the altitudes. And uh, the orthocenter uh, sometimes is outside of the circle. So you'll have to be careful when you're finding that. That's all that we have. If there's any questions, I will address them tomorrow in class, or you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a good night.